what is it exactly that killed Jesus? What was the first domino that fell that ended up in his crucifixion? Because we know, the end of the story we know really clearly. It was Roman soldiers that nailed his hands to the cross. Before that, it was Pontius Pilate who kind of was going back and forth with the crowds, and then it was Herod. And the domino, the first domino that falls, the first cause is the Pharisees. It's this group of Jewish leaders that had a particular doctrine, and the thing that distinguished them from others doctrinally, you know, as far as what they believed, was that they believed that there was life after death. And other Jewish parties, the Sadducees namely, didn't believe in that, because it's not really that clear in the Old Testament. But what about them? It certainly wasn't the fact that they believed in life after death. What about the Pharisees began that process that led to Christ dying? I think it's an important thing to pay attention to. What is it that killed Jesus? Well, let's ask him, what does Jesus say about the Pharisees? What's his common name for them? Jesus never calls the Pharisees evil. He never, he never simply calls them sinners. That's too generic. There's something very specific that's the beginning of the death of Christ. It's not malice. It's not even jealousy. Though I think that has a lot to do with it. The thing that, call, that Jesus calls the Pharisees over and over again is hypocrites. It's hypocrisy. That's the beginning of the process that, and that leads to the death of Christ. What does hypocrisy mean? Because the same thing is going to happen to us. It's the same thing that will kill Christ in us, and so we need to be very careful. What is hypocrisy? I think we have a kind of popular definition of it. It means to believe one thing and to do something else, but I don't think that's what it means in the case of the Pharisees. I think it's something much more specific. And I think today's gospel is an illustration of that. There's a long kind of paragraph where Mark is describing all of these sort of ritualistic things that the Jews, and especially the Pharisees, are really fond of, that care, they care about a lot. And Jesus summarizes it this, you take human things and you make them equal to or greater than the laws of God. That's hypocrisy. And I think maybe a, a one word description of it today would be shallowness. It wasn't malice, it wasn't evil, it wasn't, it wasn't jealousy even that crucified Christ. In the beginning, it was shallowness. That was the beginning. It was because they cared so much about how they looked. And they would do all of these little activities, all these little ritualistic things, to make themselves look good in front of others. And when Jesus came and poked a hole in that bubble, and said, this is all just on the surface. This is all superficial. And he called them, you know, whitewashed tombs. He said on the outside, they're, they look so nice, like, like tombstones. But underneath, they're just all just rotten. That shallowness, that caring so much about appearance, that was the beginning of the death of Christ. It's a serious thing. And... It becomes more serious the more we care about these shallow things. So I want to take a few examples, but I'm going, to, I'm going to focus mainly on one. But I'll give some examples. We have very, I think, good, there's nothing wrong with any of these things, very good human rules, human rituals. For example, get up in the morning. And everybody has a kind of ritual that they go through in the morning. You brush your teeth, you take a shower, whatever. And, I don't know, if you're like me, if I don't brush my teeth, I'm, I'm going to feel really weird until I do. There's going to be something off. And that's fine. That's a very solid part of the ritual, and if I don't do it, there's something, I'm going to feel weird. And in fact, it's kind of an act of charity to brush your teeth, because it's really for others to not smell your breath. The question I have is, 
Do I feel just as icky? Do I feel just as gross when I don't pray in the morning? Maybe not. All right, that's a small thing. What about when you eat? Oh, yeah. One of the things that comes up in the gospel today is the Jews wash their hands before they eat. And, okay, well, that's, I think, a very good thing. It's not the fact that they wash their hands before they eat that's, that's the issue. It's that they make it into this dogmatic thing that if you don't, you're committing a sin. It's not. It's a human thing. And they're made, taking a human thing and making it as if it comes from God. Or they're making it as important as the commands of God are. And it's not. And that's where we begin to see the whole facade crumble. It's when it's presented as if, if you don't do this, you are bad, there is something wrong with you. Now, I gave the example of getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth. And the Gospel gives us the example of washing your hands before you eat. But I think in our community, the place where rituals, human rituals, are the most, not just prominent, but the most dogmatic, where they're, they're, there's the most social pressure, is in weddings. There are a lot of laws that human beings have created, and specifically Chaldeans have created, for weddings. There are laws. There, there, and, in the minds of our people, they're very important laws. Laws like you have you have to do a promising. Okay, nothing wrong with that. And you have to do a proposal. Okay, nothing wrong with that. And you have to do an Instagram proposal. <laughs> and if you don't, you don't really love each other. That's where the laws start to, you start to have a question mark about them. And then you have to have an engagement party. You have to have a nishan. Those used to be the same, I don't maybe they still, they still are the same, I don't pay attention anymore. You have to have a bridal shower. Fine. I'm not saying any of these are wrong. I'm just showing you the list of laws that are so important. Then you have to have the bridal party cruise. You have to have the groomsman Vegas trip. You have to have, and then, then we get into mortal sins. Those might be venial if you don't do those all out. But apparently, from what I'm told, if, the, if a woman doesn't have a brand new dress for that wedding, that's a mortal sin. If she doesn't spend several hundred dollars doing her hair and her makeup, I really feel bad for women for all of the pressure that they, they go under. It's ridiculous. How much effort and money and time is poured into laws that do nothing for anybody? How much sorrow and pain, how much backbiting, how much gossip happen, happens when it's not all done according to the letter of the law? And then, well, if you get into the wedding party, there's a whole other story. The centerpieces and the cloths and the... It becomes, again, none of those things individually is a sin at all. Don't, don't, don't think that I'm saying that. But when that becomes something that we give our heart to, that we're disappointed when it doesn't come out right, that we criticize others for not doing well, then, yes, it becomes a serious sin then our shallowness is starting to harm other human beings. And when it becomes a competition of how many people I can invite to my wedding, of how much I can spend on my flowers. And if I do spend more, that somehow makes me better than you. No, it doesn't. If anything, it makes me more tacky.
so much effort, that's where the sin comes in. Caring so much, not any one of those individual things, but making that our heart, making that the important thing. You know why that's a sin? Because we only have so much care in our heart. We're limited, we're not God. And when we have limited resources, when we have a heart that is only so big, we can only fit so much in it. And when we fill our heart with all of this shallow garbage, when that's our heart, that means there's that much less, less room for God. And when we care so much about obeying all of these laws that everyone tells us to obey, we care that much less exactly about the laws of God that, we, that really make a difference in our lives, that really make us happy. And so all of the effort that goes into that, and, the law, and I'll just show you how the laws of God are just thrown away, or just put aside. It is the law of man that you have to do your hair, and your makeup, and you have to do the pictures before the wedding, and you have to do all this stuff. It is the law of God that you have to go to Mass every Sunday, including Sundays that you have to go to a wedding. Which is more important to you, the law of God or the law of man? You see how there's a competition, and one is going to win in the end. And it is a mortal sin to miss Mass. It is not a mortal sin to not spend three hours getting your hair done or whatever. Which is more important, your soul or your skin? Do you have depth, or will you allow God to live in the depths of your heart, or are you going to remain shallow like the Pharisees? It is the law of man to invite everybody up to a third cousin to the wedding. It is the law of man to have a certain type of centerpiece or a certain type of meal at the wedding. It is the law of God to give to the poor. And the tens of thousands of dollars that are poured into things that are thrown in the garbage the day after the wedding. I just have to ask the question, have you given a fraction of that to the poor in the last year? If not, do you worship God or not? Do you worship God or do you worship human beings or your reputation? So much effort is put into the trappings, the, the gowns and the suits and the tuxedos and all of the exterior things. And it's not large, but it's there. Divorce exists in the Chaldean community. We're, we haven't caught up to the rest of America. The rest of America is around 50%. We're around 12, 13, maybe up to 15%. But it's increasing. Is as much effort put into loving one another as husband and wife or as fiancés? Is that much effort put into getting to know each other? Is that much effort put into purity and remaining virgins until you're married? Is there that much effort put into that, which, by the way, according to the law of God, is equally important for men and for women? According to the law of man, this shows how stupid the law of man is, it's somehow less of a sin for a male. No, it's not. Is there that much effort? Because it takes a big effort to get all this stuff done before the wedding. Maybe save a little bit for your own purity. Maybe save a little bit to respect your own body. We are limited human beings. And the Pharisees wasted their entire hearts on looking cool in front of people. Don't waste your heart. God wants to live within your heart. But in order to, for God to live within your heart, there has to be an inside there has to be depth for God to find. And if everything has become shallow, if everything is superficial, there is no room for God. And that is what happened to the Pharisees. And that is what happened leading, that is what happened that led to the crucifixion. But Christ died and he was placed inside the tomb. A tomb.
tomb that was empty and that was brand new and that no one else had been inside before. And his grace is offered to us to transform our hearts from full wedding halls that are full of shallowness and empty things into that empty tomb where the Eucharist can come and dwell and where he can rise again within us.